everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Sauce with Kenzie Taylor. Today, my guest is Tommy Pistol. Hi, Tommy. Hello. How are you? Pretty good. How are good. you? Good. I'm doing fabulous. Excellent. Especially now that you're here. Oh. <laughs> These are great mics. Right? I know. You're like, I don't want to get too close. <laughs> um, if you could, just for everyone who doesn't know who you are, tell us what you do. I am a adult film star. Mm -hmm. June of 2022 will make 19 years. That's awesome. Of slinging ding dongs. <laughs> Does it make you feel weird when you have to work with girls that are as old as that? Uh, <laughs> or no, no? No. Yeah. As long as they're above 18, you're like, okay, cool. Yeah. As long as you're walking on, you're like, yeah. I'm legal. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's the job, mm -hmm. like whatever, old or young. <laughs> I don't. It's just as long as you're yeah. of age. Like <laughs> I go to sleep early. Yeah, like, yeah. I go to sleep <laughs> fine, knowing I did nothing wrong. Yeah, with everyone consent. Um, you've done a bit of stand up comedy as well. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, so it's so I kind of went in reverse. <laughs> I yeah. guess people would uh, somebody refer to because I started out in sketch comedy. So mm -hmm. um, a, a bunch of guys I met in high school, we just clicked and we really like we were just constantly joking around and being stupid with each other. Mm -hmm. And that was what one of my friends. And then the other two, we found out that they were doing kind of like skits, mm -hmm. you know, and this was before like. YouTube really blew up and yeah. shit. That was like, I think I met him in 2008. No, no, I'm sorry, earlier, like 2002 when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, so we were doing silly, it was just funny because they were doing their thing and we were doing our thing and like mm -hmm. we would use like the, the high school like film equipment and stuff like that because the teacher, was awesome and he wanted to inspire us to keep doing stupid shit so we would say after cool. school <laughs> and like we would do like make idiots of ourselves and like other schoolmates would like want to hang out because like you guys are so funny were you guys kind of doing like a jackass type thing was like it stunts and stuff or just being funny i mean it would always every i mean we're men like, <laughs> yeah yeah of course like <laughs> hit me with that it'll be yeah, fine yeah like, um <laughs> I mean, it was more our inspiration was definitely more like kids in the hall and like the state and mm -hmm. mighty python and stuff like that and uh yeah those so those were like our inspirations and um when we uh kind of realized we were all like into the same thing and stuff and then we ended up doing like the sketch comedy for like 11 years and we did some live shows which i wish we were really would have focused on because I feel like that was a moment where comedy groups were like really being looked at. And mm -hmm. I mean, in, in New York, we had like every access to every fucking comedy club. Yeah. And we didn't take advantage of any. Was there <laughs> ever any um, moment in time where you guys didn't perform at, you know, just comedy clubs? Were there other places or is it typically just well, comedy clubs well, where you would go? Well, the thing was that we, I felt like we really missed our chance was we weren't doing enough comedy clubs we were, okay. we were putting everything on public access oh, so we would make okay. like hour two hour long tapes of us being jackass yeah but like <laughs> we would get together we'd write it out we'd get mm -hmm. props and comedy and so we did that but being we were putting it on public access to mm -hmm. us it was like that was our internet at their time so mm -hmm. We had people responding to us to be like, I saw your comedy skit at like 6 a.m. Yeah. I was watching <laughs> public acts. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and it was great. And like w the thing, we were called Cheese Theater Productions. Like if you look up Cheese Theater, Welcome to Queens, you can see a bunch of our skits still on uh, YouTube. And okay, everything. check it out, guys. But <laughs> the thing that was so silly, like, 
when I was young, I had so much oomph to do everything. Like, mm-hmm. so I was doing Thai boxing. I was in a band. I was doing sketch comedy. I did some stand-up job, girlfriend. Did you and play I, a, uh, an instrument or did you I sing? Was, I was playing bass in one band and then uh, that was called Phlegm. Uh, oh. <laughs> and then the, <laughs> well, other, <laughs> the other band I was doing vocals was called Provoke. And that was like a way more like hardcore. Nice. Kind of did you like, stuff. you did screamo Scream, type stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Just. Did you do like the pig squeal too that they do? I'm sure I did everything. <laughs> I was just, I was always, uh, I was always, I don't know, on not many, I don't see a lot of people do it, but I was very like, I moved a lot on stage and stuff, which mm-hmm. is, I don't know if helped the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> helped me or hurt me, but you know, I went with the feeling, I went with the flow, and it was yeah. like, a lot of people appreciated that, and I don't know. Do you think it started at a young age? I mean, were you watching a lot of movies, or that you know, comedy I, movies that yeah. got you into that and then kind of wanted to go I, further? Or I, I loved movies mm-hmm. growing up. I loved comedies. Um, like, I don't have too many memories that stand out with my dad because we were mm-hmm. poor and, like, we didn't travel or do anything. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty, like every day Mm -hmm. uh like the hardest i ever saw him laugh was during like when uh leslie nielsen was peeing during the naked gun (laughs) and he had the mic on Mm -hmm. it was that like long (laughs) piss and everyone's hearing it and i never saw him like laugh that hard yeah and like he used to when he would laugh really hard that he would look snap his fingers uh-huh he's just like he'd like pace and like snap his fingers yeah like, oh my god he's losing it this yeah. is amazing so but i just always love comedy i like growing up i gotta admit like growing up like i was born in 76 so uh growing up during the 80s like and where are you from Cat- uh new york mm-hmm. so, <laughs> that's it, it came out. out the accent <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like being around in that time and having that diverse a comedy and like now looking at it it was like oh my god like that Mm -hmm. whole movie was offensive yeah (laughs) like every hilarious but offensive (laughs) yeah now it's like oh i was laughing at that yeah Hmm. (laughs) but i mean that's that's how i was like growing up like i grew up it was a very like kind of uh greek italian Mm -hmm. neighborhood you know so like it was different back then. Like people, their I feel like their offensiveness. Now it's like, oh, they were always offended, you asshole. <laughs> but, but it was like people back then, growing up, and maybe that's just a New York thing or something. Like they would like call people by their race, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. instead of like learn their fucking name because we're a bunch of fucking. Idiots. <laughs> I think in New York. I mean, ever since I went there, my first time going there was like, like nine or ten years ago, and. The one thing I really loved about it was how real everyone is. And they're just, I mean, so blunt. Nobody really holds back. And I love that personally. I know some people are like, whoa, that's too much. Yeah. But I love that. (laughs) Yeah. It's, I mean, you know, you make it in New York, you make it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like that Mm -hmm. whole thing. And it's true. It's very, like, I don't know about now, but, like, there was a very rawness and just... People were being people. Like, Mm -hmm. nobody was, honestly, like, nobody was polite. (laughs) Yeah. Like, you don't realize that. (laughs) Manners? What are those? Yeah. You know, but it was just, it was a different time and stuff. And, like, even now, at this point of, like, age, like, I'm so glad I did grow up then Mm because it definitely helped me realize, like, how people are, like, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And, I, I feel I'm more segre- like not around people as much now I'm older like I don't want to go out I don't want to be around yeah a lot yeah of people you're more recluse yeah so like having that that knowledge and growing up with that experience of just like taking the seven train R and like all these trains in New York like every stop like you would m- mix with so many different people and races mm-hmm. and everything and that was the amazing thing about growing up in New York because. You got to experience so many different things Mm -hmm. and all the different cultures. So many times it was so fast, and Mm -hmm. you just had to like learn to read people a lot. Like, Mm -hmm. and I have kids, and like I feel like they're missing 
a huge opportunity to learn about people because it's not the same. Like, I feel like social media and just people being like kind of just drown out by a lot of propaganda in the news and stuff like that. It's kind of like dampered like their real perception of what's really going on. You know what, what I mean? Whoever they're watching online, they're watching someone being a character. Mm -hmm. So they're not really getting that person. Mm -hmm. And like that was the thing about like, you know, hopping on the N train, going to Coney Island, like so much like everybody's going to the beach yeah. and you just get to learn personalities and just so much about people and reading them. And it's like, I feel like they've missed a, They're missing a huge part because they're not, they only get to do that in school, mm -hmm. you know? And like, I don't know. It's like, I'm really glad I got to experience that because it did kind of prepare me for the rest of my life. And do you think it gave you people. tough skin in a way? As definitely skin confidence yeah. definitely like to read someone like this guy is a piece of shit yeah. like or phony or <laughs> yeah. you know like no i'm not gonna walk with you down that alley you fucking dick <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I, I guess um everything that you did as far as you know there and and the comedy and stuff like that how did you get into the acting realm did you go to school for acting because i mean as everyone that is a fan of yours, and I mean, I've worked with you personally. Oh. Tommy is one of the best actors, and he also just won Best Actor and Male Performer of the Year at ABN, just saying. No. <laughs> so, but yeah, I would love to hear like about your acting journey. Well, I, I definitely, as a kid, like, I always loved acting. I loved watching movies. Mm -hmm. I would, like, kind of just reenact stuff and it was always a dream to do that mm -hmm. so it was weird like when I was as far as I can remember every time I walked by a fountain I'd like make a wish and be like I want to be rich and famous mm -hmm. you know and well, the one where you throw the pennies in yeah, you would just wish I yeah I yeah just you know if I had money I, I always believed in the wishing <laughs> wells too <laughs> you know it's so it's like having that mind frame and mm -hmm. like and now kind of getting to where i'm at you know as an adult i was like <laughs> i should have been more specific <laughs> <laughs> i sh really should have said mainstream <laughs> actual money <laughs> i can hold but um you still could go there i mean no oh, the no. sky's the limit honestly it, it, no no and yeah and that's it's amazing things like that are like mm -hmm. opportunity is always there. You just got to have the fucking courage to go get it. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to be an actor. Again, uh, I went to public schools. There was like never opportunities like that. Like mm -hmm. I may, I think I took one theater class in mm -hmm. like junior high and the, and it was like, not preparing like the teacher like she was on a, com a furniture commercial <laughs> play at like midnight so it's like that's your yeah. acting teacher you know and it's like you're yeah, like i am a star train me <laughs> the furniture lady told me i'm a yeah, star and yeah and like you'd leave class and be like oh, i just went to my <laughs> acting class <laughs> oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> You know, no one can sit with me. I'm an actor. Like, <laughs> like I remember going on auditions and like I, the one audition that really stood out was like Primal Fear. Mm -hmm. Like Edward Norton went for it, and I forgot the other guy's name. Um, but I sat next to him, like at the audition. Like mm -hmm. he came in, and like I had like three things I did, and it was probably the sketch comedy <laughs> he did, and it was like not legit, and like. I remember looking at his page and it was like this whole fucking, and it was like, wow, oh, this guy. Yeah. Like, like you didn't really know what to expect. No, it was, it was, it's weird. Like at certain times, like when I had to like be on, I'd get nervous. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where like school training would have obviously helped. Yeah. You know? Once I was in my comfort zone, I could like, fuck it, whatever, do anything. Mm -hmm. But you know, obviously I didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just, I don't know. It was like kind of a, I could have tried for agents and other things. I did some extra work. Like it was another big part in New York and acting. Like I was an extra on the Godzilla movie. 
That's cool. You know, with, Were you running away from God's I was yeah. running away. But then, like, that became a shitty experience because for maybe if I was wearing the wrong hoodie or something, they were like, can you step aside? And there's, like, hundreds of extras. Yeah. And I was like, wait, just me? And yeah. they were like, they still see you further. <laughs> and then I went in a store and got a yeah. coffee. And I was like, this really sucks. This is breaking my heart. Because yeah. I loved Godzilla. And yeah. now it's like, can you get out of the screaming hundred? new yorkers yeah you're standing out and then no I, one like, thinks of your feelings and then i convinced myself <laughs> i was so good they were like we can't have him on screen like he's Aww. too good and it's gonna sh overshadow the monster so <laughs> i love that <laughs> <laughs> godzilla you're a loser <laughs> i will own you i don't know who that kid <laughs> is but yeah. get him out of here <laughs> so if you guys see me walking around in the background of godzilla you're welcome <laughs> not many people saw that one yeah. <laughs> it didn't do to you. but um i just i always wanted to do acting yeah and like doing the sketch comedy i met doug sackman who um was working with trauma lloyd kaufman mm -hmm. and he uh we started doing skits with him and like trauma tv and things so it was like as long as I was doing little things that I wasn't getting paid for, I was happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I felt more still like in control and the nervousness to go to do something bigger was always there. And that probably held me back because yeah. I didn't think I was good enough or I was good enough for that, but then not that. I don't know. Something wasn't pushing me to like that drive because I was still doing it. Yeah. I was like... It also still had like had to hold my regular job and everything what were you doing as a I regular was, job um at that time i had many jobs mm -hmm. but for the longest i was doing a maintenance job it's mm -hmm. with a union you get in a new mm -hmm. union in new york you're set you know yeah it's like, the same thing like where i'm from in michigan like a lot of people are union and yeah they're set with BJ. a pension and insurance and everything yeah like that's what i dream like yeah <laughs> like, yeah you get, i get health care yeah oh my god <laughs> hold like i wish i had health care yeah yeah that was taken care of but <laughs> and it like it was just i was still doing stuff but it wasn't exactly what i wanted but i was still happy because mm -hmm. i was doing it so. yeah you're it seems like you've always been like since you were a child like you know passionate about it which is yeah so important especially in my opinion when you want to be really successful and good at something like if you're not passionate about it it's gonna show and i can tell like yes i know it is just porn you know that you're acting in but you are super passionate about it and like it honestly i've shared this in an interview before uh, recently, but it was an honor to like work with you. Like mm. as both of us leads, it was just awesome. Like and our roles were super cool and fucked up and I loved it. And it was, just, you're just really passionate and it really shows and it's super inspiring, Thank especially you. to, you know, younger, uh, younger men that are coming in or even girls or non-binary people, you know, so. Yeah. Well, I, I I feel like I noticed at a, maybe this made me naive or maybe I should have, I don't know, take advantage of having this knowledge of seeing how, how different male performers act, you know, mm -hmm. and the really cocky ones, whether they're really good or not, they still move forward. You know, they got bigger deals or more monies, like, you know, and in my head, I was always like, you have to just, I'm replaceable. I am always going to be replaceable. Like I'm not packing 12 inches or chiseled or anything. So it was like, for me, I was like, I always have to do a good performance. I always have to be on like Tommy pistol. Like he has to always give this the best performance he can. Cause honestly, the fear of like, well, he's not that good. Let's pass him up. Like I've seen that happen so many times mm -hmm. and that's always been kind of like once I determined like this is my fucking job, this is how I'm going to pay my rent bills mm -hmm. to care of my family. Like this has to be taken serious. So like no partying, no like 
heavy drugs or mm-hmm. alcohol and like I was never really into that. Damn, stuff. I was anyway. gonna ask you to smoke crack with me, man. Oh, <laughs> Fuck. fucking up my jam, dog. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> crack in a treadmill. Yeah, yeah. like Let's what? Go do yeah, that. <laughs> that cardio. In. And then maybe we can join the uh, the furniture store commercial at midnight with the. Uh, that uh, teacher you had. That's a callback, right ladies and gentlemen, in case you didn't know in comedy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, I just always, I took it serious because once I realized like, oh, people are looking at me a certain way and mm-hmm. like now I'm getting hired because see, everybody expects a certain performance. Like I always have to deliver it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. That's in my head how I saw it. You know, if people see your work and it's like, it's just porn, you know, like it's, it's just work. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a performance that we have to do. Like yeah. if we're not on, it's kind of obvious. I personally, not doing well. for the longest <laughs> time, I used to take that so personal and people would be like, oh, you just do porn. It's so easy. You just lay there and get fucked. I'm like, no, like it's not easy. <laughs> if, if it was easy, literally anyone could do it. To, the thing is, is yes, maybe everyone can try to do it, but you know, I know, like to have a longevity in this career, you have to be good at it. <laughs> yeah, if, if <laughs> to be successful, like and last, you know. There's a reason why some people come in and they do well, and then they fall off. It's mm-hmm. not just the performance part; it's also like the mental state mm-hmm. that you do have to deal with, mm-hmm. and. We're all inside our bubble. We're fine, but when you when it sinks in and you really realize, like the rest of the world can look at you, like, yeah, a yeah. horrendous, horrible person, yeah. Like <laughs> as I get older, that doesn't go away. That yeah. becomes heavier. Mm-hmm. And like also for my kids and my family, like you know, I can't introduce myself to them and be like, "Hey, yeah, I'm his dad," and also I do this, you yeah, because that's like. Er, never speak to my kid you know yeah that's yeah. a fear like that's not like this is that's not a whatever they'll just brush it off yeah no yeah. that's a serious, to a lot of people especially if they're religious like, it's like a huge thing so yeah as i get older and as they get older and as i still stay current or whatever else i might do mm-hmm. you know if the possibility that's going to come out and like go viral or something is like a fucking fear. It's Mm -hmm. scary because I don't, I know why I'm doing this. I know why I do. I know why I've been doing it, but it will never justify to anyone else who already thinks horrible things about this industry. Yeah. Unfortunately hard. That's a lot of weight to live with and go through every day. It is. And unfortunately, you know, we can't, Go ahead and tell every single person 24 seven, you know, my intentions are right. I live with integrity. I'm a good person. My job doesn't define me. Like I'm respectful. Like you yeah. can't say those things to every single person because I mean, half of them aren't even going to believe us because the we second, get looked at like yeah. zoo animals behind the glass. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Yeah. Or you, like, oh, look, he's pooping. Like <laughs> it's like you try to post something online that's like, uplifting or positive yeah. and then someone's like yeah look at those tits or like yeah. show me your dick you know what's <laughs> sad like, yeah every time you i can post never, like <laughs> there's barely any separation from mm-hmm. normalcy and the job i just did a really artsy like photo shoot that i'm really proud of i did the set design everything right and i've posted some of the photos and because it's not my ass my tits and i'm not just like bah. Everyone's just like, oh, it's whatever. Like a few likes. And then and then comments like, get your tits out. Why can't we see any ass in this? Why are you wearing clothes? I'm like, I don't know. Why am I wearing clothes? Can like, I shit on you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's, for $5. Yeah, like the mental, <laughs> the mental health aspect of, I mean, I feel like any job in entertainment, but I mean, especially like mainstream and our job, it's just like... I mean, nobody's Crazy. like, <laughs> if the the ratio of people sending like a mainstream actress, like horrendous shit, mm-hmm. I, uh, obviously it happens, but mostly yeah. on Twitter, you're going to see like support yeah. and you're beautiful and everything. But like, usually any, <laughs> that's why like 
you know, I had pics of it, uh, separate accounts with my kids and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I took it down because it was just like, I don't know. It's like, as again, as I get older, like the weight of like the worry of how people are going to perceive me or them or whatever the fuck they're going to do to like yeah. weekend warrior, like make them self feel better. I'm going to ruin yeah. this guy's life or like keyboard warriors. Kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck dude? Like, yeah, I don't know. Just it's, leave us alone. <laughs> it's just, well, it's just, it's weird. It's a weird time. Like it is like, obviously the internet's amazing, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's you know, it's amazing, but it sucks at the same time. <laughs> yeah, because does anybody like? I'm sure our parents growing up, like, of course they had fear of like kids being kidnapped and child molesters mm -hmm. and stuff. But mm -hmm. like, there's so much info now. Now being also a parent, it's mm -hmm. just like, ah, this is like I know why I don't tell my kids just go out and play. Yeah, because I'm fucking terrified. <laughs> yeah, the trafficking has really been insane lately. Like people are being like abducted, like just walking their dogs. But that's it's always crazy. been like that. Yeah, you but know? now but, because of social we, media. Yeah, it's yep. like every day, like another mm -hmm. like fucking Amber Alert. Yeah, of, it's like, the same thing with racism. <laughs> I mean, that's been an ongoing thing forever, you know. And now, ever since like the George Floyd, you know, death, you know, rest in peace. Um, it, you know, since that was filmed and put on the internet for everyone to see. Ever since then, you know, people were going crazy about it, but it's like, this has always been happening. Someone just finally happened to catch it on film. What? It's, and I'm, it's gonna continue to just get worse, I feel like, because each person has their own opinion and people are just fighting and fighting back and forth. Well, that's, you know, the question of like, you know, are you gonna choose to raise your voice about this particular thing? Because it happened like probably a hundred other places that mm -hmm. weren't filmed that mm -hmm. you go all search and find out and police, police, police reports and stuff. It's always been there, mm -hmm. but it's like, what's the what's the popular disaster now that I could like, you know, go there and be like, hey, I'm here supporting. Like, I gotta let you know I'm supporting, mm -hmm. so you know I support. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, do we? all really fucking support are we going to our congress and yeah. writing letters every day yeah are we like as americans are we like standing up and being like this shit is fucked up can we fucking stop and like do we have the power to make a stand will we always be not united like mm -hmm. it's fucking weird like mm -hmm. it's weird it's weird times yeah and it's just like yeah every week is like what's the new like disaster that i can help out with yeah or feel like i'm helping out but then like you know go get a latte and yeah <laughs> what know? do you do um like for your mental health as, as far as you know <clears throat> balancing you know you're you're a father and uh you know you have a life obviously you're not tommy pistol 24 <laughs> 7 no. so when you're not working and everything how do you balance you know your mental health and like your personal life and stuff so that your work doesn't kind of like take over well, we're, I mean, I guess, so the work I have, like my job for 18 plus years, it's always been, it's freelance. It's mm -hmm. basically call me, I'm available. Mm -hmm. That's a horrible way to live because mm -hmm. <laughs> you're always fucking stressed. What's going to happen? When is it coming? Like when I had the maintenance job, it was like, oh, I know I'm working like tuesday or monday to saturday yeah you were or, on a set yeah, schedule yeah, you know so now it's like it's insane because i'm making i'm doing well but it was like i'm more stressed because like i never know when the work's gonna come yeah and a lot of the stuff's cancel. last minute yeah like yeah you know i had like this month so far has been shitty yeah you know? and it's like that doesn't sit well and like yes i'm I'll be fine, mm -hmm. but it's still like the mental state of like needing to work and like support and like no. Yeah. Well, as long as this many things happen, like everything's taken care of. So, I mean, work wise, there's always this like kind of weird worry or like when, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah. It's not solid. How are you able to but balance that? It's balancing is a lot of like, it's weird because I fall in and out of balance uh like i'll work out and then fall out of it but mm -hmm. you know really family helps me keeps me grounded mm -hmm. um 
my girlfriend, uh, we've been doing more skits together and stuff. And like, we recently like sold a commercial to Baldo. That's awesome. So we just shot it and it's as far, we're waiting on this finals approval, but like mm-hmm. for us, it was like probably one of the funniest things I ever did. Yeah. And it was just literally the I two of see us with a, with a green screen. <laughs> yeah. But like, she's such an amazing editor. Mm-hmm. Like she threw down cause mm-hmm. like together, I know I can't do this forever Ye- and we really work well together. So mm-hmm. like we're trying to, make something of it yeah you're you know? you're trying to evolve but gr- like glow up together I yes guess, as they say <laughs> so fi- finding a I guess a balance like I should be meditating I should be like <laughs> putting more time to myself for uh reading and stuff and like I do get to do that at times but it's not like a regular routine and I just you know I'm usually probably scatterbrain yeah like looking <laughs> at the fucking my phone for stupid likes yeah 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 (laughs) you know but like when i'm with my kids like everything is like fuck everything else everything else is uh, is is like not even existing yeah and like i feel indefinitely within the past like the shit that we've all been through you know me being there and present and making sure they're laughing is like more important than anything now and it also helps my state of my mental state because yeah we all just went through some weird shit Mm -hmm. and it still feels like it's there and it's not and like there's Mm -hmm. this definitely feeling of like something's gonna happen yeah like yeah (laughs) like when is it what we're not sure but it's nothing feels steady yeah definitely there's so much unknown but i feel like it's always been like that but ever since kind of covid happened and like uh, yeah it's just it's it, began to be like yeah. the plague so finding what's a, happening next <laughs> yeah like <laughs> stay tuned what are you waking up to <laughs> yeah like fucking robots Kaji, yeah yeah aliens like there I really are robots though taking people's jobs did you see the little robot delivery things it scared the shit out of me i seen one in downtown driving really? by me yeah it's crazy <laughs> i mean fuck it let's like yeah. catch up to her our sci-fi movies already like <laughs> we're uh, we're so behind and so much stuff it's yeah. like yeah but you know there's always going to be one asshole who's going to be i'm taking it home yeah or, or i'm going to fuck it or piss <laughs> on it or now it's my lunchbox yeah I don't know, like, yeah um <laughs> how does how does your girlfriend feel about um your job does she like uh get upset at all when you have to work a lot or is that balance pretty good um to be honest like we met like she was a cinematographer for a company Mm -hmm. and that's how we met and she understands but even people who work together like it's a it's i feel like this it's a huge ask yeah to be like hey you go do a good job today. I you know go, what slugger. <laughs> Get it done. Go dig yeah. it deep. Go team. Kill those ovaries. <laughs> Hot shot. Smack on the ass that on pistol. the way. <laughs> yeah, like, and then ho- you know, hopefully you'll love come me home, later. Like, <laughs> have the energy. Yeah, to do it. <laughs> like she's, you know, she she knows it's my job and mm-hmm. everything, but like. It does ask a lot of somebody, so yeah. it's not always, you know, the easiest situation sometimes, you know? Yeah. Like, how do you respect that? Like, when you're coming home, like, just be definite about times and, like, so keep them in the loop and, Just tons you know? of, just communication yeah, and trust instead of, like, just key. going to work, so you want to see, you, then yeah. it's like, well, what the <laughs> fuck, what am I like a that is the only thing about our job, you know, especially if we're on set for feature films. I mean, you know, you just uh, f- filmed Grinders, correct? Yeah. So, I mean, those are really long days. How many days did you guys film for for that? I, I was only on it for two, but... Your each, look was hilarious. <laughs> I was in the makeup chair for like almost three hours each time. Yeah, what exactly did they have to put on you? Uh, he put a ball cap and he painted it and then the hair. Like, it was just... It's just getting all the layers Mm -hmm. in so it looks even. So it looks real. Yeah. Yeah. Just so Alex Moon was the makeup artist on it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's professional and it takes time. You can't rush it. Did you you have prosthetics on your face at all? 
Or no, no? Process, I mean, besides the wig, he just painted and then like the beard and stuff like that. So, and I didn't have to, I did one scene wearing all that. Yeah. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it was just certain things I was like. Did you do a sex scene like yeah, that? Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> With Vicky Chase, like when I went down on her, yeah. I could feel like my my face was on her lap, and I was like, "This is gonna come off." Yeah, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I could feel it connecting the glue to her leg. Yeah. I was like, "I might come off." And I was just like, "Oh yeah, you like that?" You're, you're, you're like this. You're like, "It's so good." Uh. Yeah, it was moving towards the end. And yeah. She was like, "I didn't want to say anything because then we would have stopped." And yeah, I, so. It, it's um yeah that was that was that was an experience was it a fun project for it you was, i mean yeah it was yeah. an emotional thing and i like i like getting called in for those uh, do you do a lot of um for your technique do you do a lot of method acting it's it's i i think uh it was actually uh who's the old porn director paul thomas all am i saying that right? i'm not sure Behind the green door. I'm terrible with, with names of people that were before my time. Well, so, I mean, I somebody in the industry, surprisingly, yes. somebody was like, look, if you've been through a lot of shit. Yeah. Like, if your life generally fucking sucked yeah. at times. Yeah. Like, you could do this. Yeah. If you could fucking hide misery and still put on a smile. Yeah. And just fucking nobody mm -hmm. knows, like, mm -hmm. you're fine. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. you'll do well. So it's, I'm, like, definitely after COVID, like, 10 months of not working mm -hmm. and all that stress, once I came back, like, you know, I was behind the, behind the, under the veil, mm -hmm. like, there, and uh, um, Casey, like, those were big movies where I had to show a lot of emotions. And, like, just once that whole year, I felt like, Ricky Greenwood, he gave mm -hmm. me a lot of parts where I had to show emotion. Mm -hmm. And it was actually easy because yeah. there was so much worry and sadness and anxiety inside me. Like mm -hmm. when he was like, hey, you know, it's very, I could cry. Like yeah, yeah. instantly. Like yeah. it was just like, I could do it over and over. And I think having that, all that stuff inside me, like, made it possible yeah you know? but like i wouldn't be sad horrible person like i would do the part cut and then i'd be normal like mm -hmm. i didn't have to be a horrible asshole like the yeah whole yeah time. Like, yeah i don't i don't get under i don't get that. do you have to <laughs> yeah like when you go home after you do roles like that do you have to have like some quiet time to decompress or are you already like detached emotionally it's funny there's some scenes where like there's some movies where I was like r a really crazy person mm -hmm. and like driving home and like just stuff repeating in my head. Like yeah. it, f I felt weird. Yeah, it, and it's also like you know you're doing great, praise everything like on set and mm -hmm. like give, 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 and then it's like okay now I'm alone going back and it's like ah oh, it's like, like you're coming down there's like yeah no yeah. exactly there's yeah. so much inside me that's like where is this going <laughs> yeah now, you know and yeah. it's like like one or two times like i i know i came home and i was probably still kind of that person yeah and it's, and it's like, not intentional yeah and it's weird it's just like if you pretend to be somebody long enough like you do get that does rub off on you like, yeah but you know, I never was on set and like being a horrible person, and then like, well, I'm gonna treat the crew crew horrible, so yeah. I stay in character. Like, yeah, eat a dick, dude. <laughs> like, that's fucking stupid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I believe um, it was a documentary I watched actually about um, you might have seen it about Robin Williams, mm -hmm. and it shared in that about how, you know, uh, most successful comedians and stuff they'll get so high off the crowd and feel amazing and get all the praise like you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards they feel just like complete shit cause they come back down and yeah. they get to the, like the low state again. And cause they, and then they want to feel like that again. Yeah. So it's almost like a, a, an addiction kind of, I guess that, that I, feeling. I, I get it. If, if, if you're getting that feeling and you're getting paid good mm -hmm. money, like, yeah, that's you never become, want it to end. <laughs> yeah, because then 
you feel normal. Mm -hmm. And like when that when that high is gone, it's kind of like then you really get to sit and look at everything and be like, oh, I'm like behind in bills or like, yeah, I'm not have what I want or I don't feel comfortable or like yeah. this, ha- this fucking apartment sucks. Like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> where the hell am I? I don't know. Yeah, I don't make the it's, rules. Like, <laughs> it's, you know, it's weird. It's like, yeah, I could be on set and do movies and like, I'm getting praise and acknowledge and p- thanks and everything. But you know, sometimes like when I, I'll work with my girlfriend on like the skits we're doing or something like that. And she'll be like, kind of, um, Give me this or do it again mm-hmm. acting because she directs and also and everything. That's awesome. And it's, um, I don't know, it's like sometimes it gets to me because it's like, I'm not getting the same love. Yeah. What's <laughs> going on? Like, Praise me. What do you mean I got to do that again? <laughs> what? Less character? <laughs> I'm always a jerk. <laughs> like, like point- Love me. Give me the praise, huh? You're I'm saying? not feeling appreciated. <laughs> For anyone that doesn't know, which is pretty much everyone listening and watching right now, Whenever Tommy and I are on set together, we always normally spend about five minutes when we first see one another doing weird voices. Um, it's fucking hilarious. That's probably one of my favorite things when I know I'm going to see you. <laughs> we didn't do it today because we got right on air, but that's normally what we do when we see one another. Yes. So it's it's like for acting wise, like I, I've. And maybe this kind of has a fear like like moving to main shame or doing stuff like that. Like, am I going to be good enough? Mm-hmm. And that that's that's weird because it's like, I've proved I'm good enough in porn. I proved like yeah. I go above and beyond and I stand out from like hundreds or what thousands of other people that have come along in the business. And it's like, I've made a name for myself. And it's like, that's on porn. But like when I'm doing yeah. like commercials that I'm shooting with her or whatever it's always that fear of like am i talented enough because i didn't get their respect you know yeah yeah it's almost like in a way like not saying this is how you feel but it's an analogy like i'm fucking amazing over here but i'm nothing over here yeah (laughs) and that and that's like again worrying about how people might perceive me yeah oh you're a great actor for porn yeah (laughs) to poop on yeah (laughs) with your pee pee (laughs) (laughs) would you say that you know um uh, you're a confident person like when you're not on a porn set um it 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 varies because it's like i feel when i'm on like work set porn Mm -hmm. yeah i'm i have to be confident like yeah because it's a whole mind game and like if my brain isn't there doesn't matter how many fucking boner pills I might swallow, mm. whatever cocktail I've thrown together. How many hot ladies are around you? It, you're just yeah, like, it's yeah. It's like, because I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't want to inject because mm-hmm. people do that. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm not ready to carve out the inside of my cock yeah. and put a pump inside. God which damn is totally, it. Fine. Just all that is fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's like, it's just not what you want to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's like still a mental state. So like, yeah. I like I have to have like some kind of connection with mm-hmm. someone. Like I gotta know like you're okay doing this. Yeah, like we're cool. I think that's a big thing <laughs> about like going like you know going back to like well, how we were talking about people thinking like oh anyone can do porn like they don't realize like not even just the men but the women like we or and non-binary people we have to be in a state of mind it because to do a good scene and deliver you have to have some sort of chemistry if yeah. not it's just gonna be like oh cool like it's fucking uh, obvious and like, don't get don't get me wrong i have many of those scenes where i'm like I wish well, that I was can't. burned. Just get it, <laughs> get it away, please. Is there a fire alarm yeah. I could pull? I, please, Google, remove that now. Yeah, and like that's that's a lot. Like, yeah, that's a fucking lot. Like that yeah. doesn't go, and that's not a one-time thing. No, because once it's, it's on not. the internet, it's there yeah. forever, forever so, and ever. They could block. 
they don't have to shoot my face. Yeah. Your face has to be on yeah. camera. And if you're not like, this is amazing. Yeah. It's going to fucking it shows. Sh yeah. 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 <laughs> like, you can't have resting bitch face. Like, exactly. <laughs> I am so enjoying oh, this. That feels good. You smell great. Oh, mm. I'm happy. Don't you yes. see it? Smack my ear again, you <laughs> hunk. You fucking hunk of shit. Can't wait to fucking leave. <laughs> mm, I'm gonna spit that cum right out on your fucking face, you piece of shit. No, it's 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 so the the state of mental of what you have to do to give to perform is insane. I feel like it's like seventy five percent of the job. To be it's honest. not 99%. <laughs> yeah. like, like, it's a lot. And no one thinks of that, you know? No, like, you, like anybody who's fucked a guy that was like, or is in a relationship with a, someone abusive that yeah. does not want to be there. Yeah. Like, those are, like, not too far apart of, like, shit you have to deal with and shut it off. Yeah. And just do your job and then fucking leave. Yeah. You know? It's a lot. Yeah. I and think it's a lot when people have went through a lot in their life and they have tons of, you know, trauma or uh, just different things that, I've, that they've been through that they haven't dealt with and they come into our industry and, you know, they'll go on a set and they have a bad experience and they say, this person triggered me. There's no way to know your triggers. If you know what I mean, I I don't go to each person and be like, "What have you been through in your life?" I want to make sure that I don't bring that up. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it just or like some <laughs> asshole is gonna ask you that or something, and then be like, "I'm gonna use that to get a feeling out of her." Yeah, <laughs> it's like what? Like I've heard mainstream people do that, but like in porn, like we really, it is such a state of mind. Like yeah. I have been there. I've been through divorce and mm -hmm. like parts of times in my life were so stressful. I'm literally driving there, like almost yeah. in tears. Like, yeah. Stressed. And you fuck leave out. it out the door. Yeah. And, walk and then, in. like, exactly. once you walk through, it's just like, go, go, go. go. Yeah. It's yeah. Pistol. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't tears. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's cum. Just kidding. It's, it's piss. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. What we do, but then that also makes it so unique in a way. Yeah. And like the fact what we're selling is fantasy and yes. somebody who might be so much worse off yeah. or miserable. Like if we're giving them a few minutes, someone that's lonely and needs that to connection. Jerk and off and yeah. Just be yeah. Like, I couldn't release cut my wrist, but I jerked off. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, it is a lot. And yeah, like, people, everybody like is, has miserable times in their lives. Yeah. Nothing is perfect. I don't care how. Yeah. Holy Nothing. No one is perfect. How much like, you fucking pray. Yeah. Like <laughs> life fucking sucks. <laughs> and sometimes you got to take care of yourself. Yeah. And we have been giving out this short time yeah treatment therapy whatever you want to call it to do it like yeah it's it it could get like anything else from soda to food cigarettes drugs it can get addictive mm -hmm. if you take it in your little segments when you need it yeah it's fine like mm -hmm. everyone needs it but it's i don't know there's a lot of miserable lonely people out there so they're going to look at it more and like why can't they let's just be miserable together <laughs> goodbye everyone We're, no i'm just kidding. misery loves company yeah <laughs> uh, you know like <laughs> i because some jerk off somewhere i've never met says i shouldn't do this like <laughs> fuck you like yeah. life you, is you don't know me it's so short you don't want no smoke like <laughs> yeah <laughs> what do you think was your favorite role you've ever done, like in a uh, feature or parody, whatever, if you had to pick? Because I, I know it's a very long time, you know, coming up 19, like it's, <laughs> but um, if you, if like one came to mind, you're like, God, that was fucking, it's fun. Everything about it was great. Like, well, I, I think the, definitely the one, like uh, the evil head 
the Evil Dead parody I made with Joanna. Like, mm-hmm. I loved that movie. Yeah. I love Bruce Campbell, his timing, his uh, slapstick, mm-hmm. his mannerisms, everything about it. So the fact that my crowning, not even that, like, I love the movie, but, like, the moment where I fight my hand from grabbing my dick. Yeah. And, like, I do a backflip and a flip on my back and just toss around, like, I threw so hard on yeah. that. And everybody, <laughs> like, on set was like, God damn, dude. Like, yeah, like, that, you poured your heart and soul yeah, into for, it. Because like, I wanted that to work. And your back. So <laughs> that, yeah, everything. Yeah. I just, I love that performance. And, yeah. Like, and uh, Bisco for... Uh, uh oh my god for the Pee Wee Herman movie <laughs> I've seen a that, clip of that on yeah. YouTube I fucking loved it can you do the laugh for us <laughs> <laughs> uh I love doing that because it was so ridiculous yeah it was like we again it was like a moment where everybody part of it was like this is insane yeah we're gonna make it as fun as we did like I've done so much amazing stuff with yeah wood rocket uh like the range like we just did with seth yeah like, i've done so much good stuff yeah and you know it gets a little jumbled in there oh yeah you have so many things i know you're probably like you bitch you're asking me for one thing. no but it, it's go just, to hell anytime <laughs> i could be on set and like see not just like while we're filming people laughing yeah the reactions like it makes you know, it makes me happy. Do you think that that goes back to how you shared earlier about, you know, seeing your dad laugh like really hard like that? Uh, since you've seen that, did it kind of like drive you to really want to see people laugh like that and it makes you happy? Well, I, I, I would think, um, I, I think kind of after that, like laughing out loud, mm-hmm. I realized like is important and not trying to like, well, I really want to laugh, but, like, I don't want to offend anybody. Like, fuck it. I'm yeah. going to laugh as fucking hard as I want always mm-hmm. because that's how I feel. And exactly. Like, you know, and, like, if I know, obviously, if I know if I see other people laughing, like, as funny as I think it is and fucking wiping tears off and stuff. Like, yeah, that's amazing. You know, it's it's such a good feeling. You made me cry laugh once. I don't know if you remember. I have no. to share. It's a tiny story. It's fucking hilarious. So we were working for, <laughs> we were working for Quasar for a Wicked feature, okay. and um, our characters were uh, we were like in love, or husband and wife, and we're going on this romantic getaway. And there's this house that we shoot at that um, there's a lot of cats at, and uh, <laughs> Tommy grabbed me, and you know he grabbed me, and he was like, "Woo!" and went to go like romantically throw me on the bed. And I landed on the bed and the cat hair was like flying everywhere. And then he jumped on and his face went right into this pillow full of cat piss. (laughs) And it was like stuck to his face and he got up and he's like, with his mouth, he's like, I think that's cat piss. (laughs) And and we we had to cut because everybody was dying laughing and Quasar's laughing. The hair's just everywhere. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, it was fucking hilarious. I was, like, crying on the floor. It was so funny. (laughs) But, like, like, in a situation like that, you know, like, porn, I think, has given me an ability to not feel shame in a way. Yeah. I feel, I feel, it makes me worry for other people. You know, but as far as if it's just me, like, yeah. fuck you. It's given you, know? you an, a, you know, out, outlet and platform. Yeah. So, like, that situation of face yeah. first in a fucking <laughs> pillow of cat ear and hair and just laugh yeah. it off and be like, yeah. Well, yeah. that's gross. But, yeah. You know, let's, let's fuck. Okay. Like, yeah, let's move on. Yeah. Like, these pills aren't going to yeah. fuck themselves. Like, <laughs> You know, it's just, it, it gives you, like, what I feel like I've learned from this, like, what I was saying, like, the no shame, like, it's yeah. giving me so much courage. So, like, walking into something mainstream now was, like, would be a fucking piece of cake. Like, things yeah. feel so much more easier now from all those years of experience and, like, being naked on camera, showing yeah. your butthole. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're naked on camera, like for millions of people to see, you're like 
nothing embarrasses you, nothing bothers you. <laughs> I mean, you, could, you could get to that state yeah. where it's just like, whatever. Yeah. Like, what's your hold up? Like, what's bothering you? Like, I obvi- I'm fine. Yeah. Like, I'm, like, I'm fine. It's like the only thing stressing me out is fucking your opinion. Yeah. I remember the, the first time I fucked in front of a crew of, I believe it was like 15 or 16 people. And I was so nervous at first. And then afterwards, I was like, piece of cake. I can get through anything. <laughs> like, yeah. Sorry, I got yeah. gum in my mouth. Oh, it's okay. All right. I didn't get that. Sorry. I couldn't get it. It was like... So my first scene was with Joanna on a rooftop. Uh huh. And your like, first scene ever. Our first scene ever. So she's been booking us. Hi, Joanna. Book- oh. <laughs> so she, uh, she's been trying to book and make this thing happen, mm-hmm. and it kept canceling. But you know, she was like, "You gotta shave your body hair." Was it for Burning Angel? Yeah. Okay. It was her first scene. Like she was mm-hmm. just doing modeling, but you know, yeah. like we gotta take it up a notch. It's yeah. Different from Suicide Girls. Mm-hmm. So. You know, for like two weeks, she's like trying to book and cancel and book and cancel. And, you know, I'm shaving my whole body because that's what she said because she was naive at the time and just like, well, you can't have any body hair and <laughs> have any like. You nared like everything, even your asshole. Yeah, I was just everything. <laughs> and like the last, we go to this place and the plumbing's all fucked up. And she's like, well, I guess like we got to just schedule. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, look. I really want to do this, yeah. but I am, I can't keep shaving my body hair. It's, yeah. I'm going crazy at work. Like, yeah. you know, and so I it gets the, itchy when it grows yeah, back. So yeah. I called a friend and he's like, yeah, come use my loft. So we head out to Brooklyn and like, we're shoot, like we're looking at places and there, then they were like, there's graffiti on the roof. Do you want to use the roof? And we're like, yeah, let's check out the roof. Mm-hmm. So they go do their, they're pretty girls up on the roof and they're like, let's do the scene on the roof. And it was like, oh my God. So it was like my friend and his roommate and we're all like, <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. like giddy, like, this is gonna That's happen. fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, and then we go shoot on the roof, but we had these like fucking Home Depot lights. Yeah. You know, like, so blinding us, can't see past it, but like we keep hearing like the exit door open <gasps> because there were, when we, before we started, there were yeah. people on the roof. And we're like, we can't ask you to leave, but like, we're gonna shoot something here. Do you yeah. Mind? And they're like, no, we don't care. Yeah. So the second we started, they were like, tick, tick, tick. tick. Yeah, yeah. Just so <laughs> they an ca- audience, you're they welcome. Ca- calling people. And then when we finished the scene, there was like 20, 25 people watching us. And we get this oh, like, wow. applaud. they all applaud you. Oh, yeah. that's, and it was like, this that's is amazing. Insane. <laughs> yeah. So that that was, had to have felt so good. It felt, so crazy yeah because i was like i can't believe we just did this was that like the would you say uh, up until then was that like the riskiest thing that you've ever done like sexually as far as like place to shoot you know what i mean because you're on a rooftop and there's other people watching or did did you already kind of experience i mean i've i've had before porn like you know crazy one night stands or yeah or like not on rooftops though a threesome no no yeah. like i think one threesome you know but it wasn't it wasn't that yeah yeah you know it's like i i i was a horn dog and, yeah you know it's like a little like whatever it happens it happens. yeah <laughs> but um that was insane like that was like i can't cannot believe we did it yeah and then she wasn't shooting at much so like my third scene for them was repenetrator which was the reanimator parody Mm -hmm. and then that was all blood like we shot that up in philly at doug sackman's loft who helped like produce and write it and stuff Mm -hmm. and um that was all blood and special effects and everything and like shooting there at like 4 a.m and they're hacksawing wood and the neighbors are going crazy and like it's just like what is that but it's yeah. like all their roommates so it's like a room full of guys and fucking pbrs and yeah like just just ridiculous i used to beer bong pbr like it was water <laughs> no big deal yeah. or anything but i was so cool in college okay yeah it was just like all this shit and then that became like something really ridiculous where yeah. like they were screening it in bars we did live shows of it oh wow like we actually <laughs> did like a theater run of that in triple exorcist like that's super fucking cool yeah it was 
it's so, it was just the beginning of the career was like this is like wacky but yeah. it wasn't like the main focus because i still had a regular job and stuff but once like i moved out to la in 07 it was like this is my job this is my career yeah i moved out to direct and everything but that didn't uh with the company that didn't work out and then i went back to performing and stuff like that so it's been crazy it's I, been I feel like you've had a, a fucking ride like it's what, been, it seems like a, quite the roller coaster what, what's so weird and as i get older obviously like this ride isn't over it's kind of no like, not at all i have to find a new ride to get on eventually because as I see with all male performers, like mm -hmm. the ride ends. Yeah. And if you have not bought your ticket for a new ride or at least tried, like what's going to happen? Yeah. And that's, that's a big fear. That's a, that's a part of the industry that actually I dislike very much. Yeah. Because all the old performers, when it's done, Sayonara, see you later. They're you kind know, of just like left in the me, dust. Don't call me. Yeah. Because I'm not calling you. Yeah. So that's why don't call me. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, it's it's very, there's no security. Like yeah. there's nothing waiting for us when we're done. It's yeah. like, I can say I've done all this stuff, but I don't all own all this stuff. Yeah. I don't have a garage full of porn I could go sell. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. so that's um as much as i love this industry like after everything i've done and all the wackiness like there's i'm not dead like yeah i yeah. have to keep going like, yeah i have to find other things whether it's in this industry or not yeah it's just how it is like a lot of companies are like grat snatching up guys for contracts and everything and as amazing as I am, I'm yes, you not are. getting snatched up. Mm. And I that puts me in a category of like, okay, like I know what I could do. I know how good I could do it. I obviously have the proof, mm -hmm. but this isn't happening. Mm -hmm. And that's real. And that's a real like, hmm. So what do you do? You got to figure out other of work and everything and like mm -hmm. you know i work luckily i work great with my girlfriend mm -hmm. you know that is uh, awesome we've been together over eight years what's she's her name a, uh she's not in the industry oh, okay so. well i was just gonna say a shout out and hello to her thank you yes <laughs> uh, yeah it's just um we want to we know what we could do mm -hmm. and we it's just that whole uh finding the right market in that time yeah like, like this Baldo commercial that we did. If it does as well as we believe it can do, like yeah. it could change a lot of things. It can open more doors. Because we showed what, we, what we've what we done with two people and a, her editing skill, a blue screen, mm -hmm. the acting, and our, our my friend uh, from New York, David Segley, who did the music. Like he did the music in three days. Like we have an wow. original fucking score you know it's in less, three days for an original score is like yeah <laughs> that's so, like epic and i think he said he had covid while he was doing it he wow he, he re-got it because he was doing stand-up comedy and yeah like i know someone who just got it again too but no symptoms Weird. yeah so like if we if this and like we have a tv pilot that we wrote during the the pandemic like mm -hmm. we really found a way to like hone in with each other and our skills and it's like amazing like it's really amazing that i'm with someone that is not in the industry who still respects me and loves me and i yeah. love her and respect her yeah and we like are you know that's work i have my work she has her work but like we still found this way to like combine and work together on, an, on another yeah, aspect something i yeah. never thought i would have in a relationship because i never amazing. had that like yeah. i've had like little bits of it but then it was like were you doing this because you thought it would be cool to do at the time, but like you didn't really want to? Yeah. But like with her, like she, re like we, that's our goal. Like we mm -hmm. have post its around the room. Like we're gonna make. I it. love that. We're gonna write. Like we're gonna yeah. become real writers, and like we're gonna fucking sell our script and everything. Like to I have love somebody that. like that, mm -hmm. and it you pushes know, you it in really, a good way. It really you know? does. Yeah. And you guys are like teammates. And that's super important. You know, I, I've shared about that 
before, but like, you know, Seth and I, like we're, we're teammates. We're, mm -hmm. we're there to uplift one another, to grow together, to compensate for one another. Like I'm sure you compensate for different things, you know, that your girlfriend might not have all the way and she does for you as well. And that's yeah. the amazing thing, you know, cause like, like we said a little bit ago, no one's perfect. So no, and you can, it, you can be as perfect as possible together. <laughs> <laughs> like she, like I'm not, I, I'm she's teaching me editing at this point. That's awesome. Like, and she's so kudos to you. You have to have a lot of patience. <laughs> and it, no, it's not fucking easy. Uh, no, like, no. I was throwing down with her and like just being sitting there and like just what do you want to eat or feeding or yeah, like doing all these things. Like, you know, I'm not just like, well, I did the acting part, so I'm going to go step away and play video games while you like dig through free sound and find sound bits and all this shit that's like so exhausting and boring, yeah. you know, like I wish I could do more cause I'm learning to do that just so I could feel more helpful. Cause I felt like all this joy or talent I feel like while we're doing this big thing, it's like, I feel useless cause yeah. I don't know how to do you that. You want to contribute something. <laughs> yeah. And, but yeah. also I feel like you're the type of person who really, it, I mean, what it seems like anyway, you believe in like continuing education and like, and constantly like learning new things and- I have to. Yeah. Like, it's just, yeah. you go crazy. To be successful in my opinion, you constantly have to be learning and evolving. Like things are changing all the time. Yeah, and like the for our industry and the way we can make money, like there these opportunities weren't even around five, eight years ago. Yeah, hey, I was gonna say years seven, seven years ago yeah. when I started, they weren't around like it's- yeah, so, I, you know, I, I kind I feel like I came in at the start of that, but then it was also like, well, we're all going to get by because work's always going to hire us. Yeah. You know, that yeah. mind frame, but like, that's not the mind frame to have now. Like mm -mm. you have to have hustle after hustle after I hustle. always say I, that to new girls that ask me for advice. I'm like, never have all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. You have to have so many different things going on. Well, and then you see like people putting out like products like this beautiful cup I'm gonna take Thank home. you, show it to the camera. <laughs> Look, see? I think you can be a hand model. There's, there's your new job, another one. <laughs> uh, you gotta, you know, and like, if you don't have the finances to do that, like it gets fucking stressful. It you does, know? yeah. So you gotta, um, you gotta like, you know, everybody falls into that. I think whoever's on the internet a lot, they fall into that mind frame of like looking at other people and their success and like you're like comparing. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. Then, but, and then you're putting yourself down. Cause it's like, why am I not doing that? Why do I not like driving this car or like, why am I not pushing all this product and stuff? And it's like, money is a thing. Yeah. Talking to the right people. Like it's a constant fucking hustle and like i don't have expendable money like i thought during a what? pandemic what you're not a millionaire get off my show <laughs> what the hell i'm not impressed uh. like it's 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 crazy i thought you were the monopoly man like what i'm the hell? saying her. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's it's just it's so having the mind frame i had before being around people like well this is how it is but now like kind of moving over to now mm -hmm. things are different now. It's like finding this whole new way. And that that's like the whole thing now, like how are we going to make more income? Like my YouTube has done really good. Please I, uh, tell everybody, do you, do you have a direct link that takes you to it? It's a uh, Tommy pistol for reals. For reals. For with, real, is it with an S or a Z? I gotta look it up. It's for real or for real. Okay. <laughs> for real, for real is like, one of them. So it was like, I started doing stuff during COVID because it was like, hey, like this is what we're gonna do now. Yeah. Because stay current, and like it grew to like almost four hundred thousand followers. I know that's amazing. You told me that because we did a short little yeah. interview when we were on set or whatever for Deranged. We yeah. I think we did like two minutes or something. Yeah, like that, that was when we had downtime. But it yeah. was just like trying to find that. Okay, how do I keep this going? Because it was like I kind of like went away from it. Yeah. And then I came back and I was like, oh my God. So like, you're like, I forgot about this. <laughs> yeah. And then it yeah. was like, oh my God. So monetizing it, yeah. and, you know, like with this commercial coming out, like it's all, we have a plan and then mm -hmm. it's seeing how that plan works out. Well, I know? really hope that, you know, it, it takes off for you. What, I really hope that for you. What, what I'm so, pr 
It's okay. <laughs> but I'm so proud of it. It's, you know, and I I think, uh, I hope it stands out because one, like we hit on a lot of like ploitation movies, mm-hmm. like Taran- like we went very Tarantino, very um, Edgar Wright, like mm-hmm. the editing and style and it's fit in like the 70s and it's like it has the music. And like, yeah. <laughs> and it's so fucking ridiculous, but it's like we're selling a product. So we yeah. kind of went like, the old way of like we're talking about something but we even blur it out we're not telling you exactly what it is yeah so do you reveal it at the end we blur it out at Ah, the end you know we're like we're always saying like we're gesturing to it so it's like the idea of getting people to think like what the fuck is this? yeah and it's so ridiculous yeah like and i i think a lot of people like i understand um people are selling products now online on Instagram mm-hmm. and they're doing like, you know, cut and it's like, oh, all these different frames. But it's like, I think the the push to like really sell a product on like a minute scale, like budget mm-hmm. is kind of like people went, it's like only this level now. It's just like certain, like, look at this. It's really good. Blah, blah, blah. But like yeah. being like my girlfriend is such an amazing fucking editor. Like you're not, you're going to watch this and be like, they did this in two days by themselves in their fucking living room with a green screen. Yeah. Like the the skill to like really throw down and like sell something. Yeah. I feel like we. Not everyone can do that. that. <laughs> yeah. And I, I get it. Not everybody has like editing skills. To yeah. Fucking cut all that. So. And no one thinks of, a, you know, well, not no one, but not a lot of people think of putting a green screen in their living room. So. No, exactly. <laughs> Like every and like, I think a lot of people are expecting just simple, like just hold it up and say you like it and blah blah blah. Yeah, and you're you like, and no, that, I'm gonna take that, but I'm gonna roll with it times a hundred. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. I, what they got is like way more than they ever fucking expected. Yeah. So I I hope people will when they see it, they're gonna acknowledge like our one our film references are like our fucking directors that we enjoy and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the w- like the skill of like what had to go in to make all this happen. Mm-hmm. Like we're not on a set anywhere. But yeah. Like, it's done so well where it's like, damn, okay. <laughs> like, and I hope that people will talk about it. And yeah. Be, I hope a, a product will see it and when, and be like, why aren't we hiring them? Yeah. You do? wanted to open up many different doors, yeah. not just people you know, wondering what this product is, getting that. It's like opening doors for other things that you guys yeah, can do together. Like, uh, that's that's the fucking plan. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, like, I believe in you and your your girlfriend and your mystery product. Oh, <laughs> but yeah. I would love if you would tell everyone um, your website link, your social media, stuff like that, and share with everybody so they can follow yes, you. Yes, of course, of course. You could follow me on Twitter at Tommy Pistol. Uh, you could follow our company that mm-hmm. we're gonna be putting out for this commercial and everything prior. Or R U underscore A underscore Pilot. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then you can so R U R R U underscore A underscore Pilot. So are you a pilot? Are you a pilot? Got it. Can you fly this plane? <laughs> It's Got a little, it. Little taste of it. Uh, <laughs> Preview. And, and then on Instagram, it's official underscore pistol underscore page. Mm-hmm. And on YouTube, it's Tommy Pistol for real. Okay. So and do uh, you have an OnlyFans? I do, and that's under Tommy Pistol. Okay. As far as I know. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to come here. I hope I didn't ramble too much. You didn't. I love talking to you always. You did not ramble. I think we talked about awesome shit, you know? Yeah, it's... And you're awesome fucking almost 19 years. That's epic. It's... It's, it's insane. It's like epic it's just, and it feel... It, I, does like, it feel that long? It, oh, no, it does. Yeah. <laughs> no, my body, like, I, my yeah. dick has cha- changed yeah. shade colors <laughs> as time goes on. Yeah. It's just like, wh- it's going to be you're, black at some point. You're like a fucking but, like, lizard. Like, yeah, it's just like, you look at it and you're like, well, that's used. Yeah. <laughs> that's- well, I don't know about that car. Well, what about this one over here? Ever heard of a lemon? <laughs> yeah. 
No, it's it's crazy to know it's been that long. Mm -hmm. I can still hold a smile. I feel like I'm in better shape now, also because I'm like realizing like as I get older, like oh, no, <laughs> that cheesecake is staying. Yeah, <laughs> like I gotta get. It's that not out going of there. anywhere. Damn it. <laughs> You know, but I, I feel grateful because so many people, I think also, like, if I only did violent kink style shoots, yeah. then I would be perceived that, that as that person. Yeah, and you have always, such a wide variety. People are always surprised when they meet me because they're like, I thought you'd be bouncing off the wall or, like, trying to fuck my wife. And it's like, <laughs> well, that's kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I am normal. Yeah. Like, I do have feelings and like i do care you're you're a person what i know what you have a, a soul and a heartbeat leave immediately <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> it's as as happy as i am with this industry like i am very grateful for everything the experience the knowledge the meetings the traveling like i'm grateful for it for it. but like you know my life doesn't stop here like mm -hmm. It has to like. There's a whole new adventure coming. There's another chapter yeah, in your book. Yeah, exactly. And there'll be a chapter after that. Chapter. Exactly. And then the one... never-ending story. <laughs> You're gonna live to be 105. Oh my god, that would be epic. With this like mind frame. If you had that hair though that you had in Grinders, and you lived to be 105. I'm just that yes, guy. Just that guy. <laughs> but the hair is white instead, and you have a monocle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old now. Hey. Where's my dick? Hey, what color is it today? <laughs> I put my meds in my foreskin. <laughs> it's a pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dumb one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, Tommy, for coming. Oh, thank you. And I'm super grateful to know someone like you in the industry because you're a really good guy outside and, you know, outside of work and inside of work. And I appreciate you. Thank what, you. What You just, I, <laughs> life's really short. And yeah. I just want to be happy and make people Same. happy. Same. You know, so like it takes a lot to purposely be a dick. Yeah. <laughs> it's so easy to be like, Hey man, you're yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. But to be like, hmm, I'm gonna judge you. Yeah. Yeah. You're a I'm piece of shit. I know day. it. <laughs> <laughs> like, why why do that? Don't waste yeah. your energy on that. Fucking be a good person. Yeah. Be happy. Make people laugh. Be a good person. What the fuck was that? Be I'm happy. talking. <laughs> Make people laugh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm yeah. God damn it. <laughs> But on that note, on that note <laughs> thank you be a good so person, much. be happy, make people laugh and check out Tommy Pistol in all of his links that he shared with you. And you can also Google him and find awesome, awesome things there, too. Yeah. <laughs> and check out Deranged, too. Yes. Um, there's two parts of it, eight episodes, and it's fucking awesome. So, thank you. yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye.